Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Wrench on today's and probably a few additional episodes. I've got a whole bunch of Porsche 996 bits and bulbs to fit onto this 69911 blasphemy build. <laughs> So I just got back from San Diego and while I was down there, I stopped by Autobahn Parts Dismantler. They're a Porsche, Tesla, and BMW dismantling operation and I picked up a bunch of really cool things for my car right here. So not only do I have the crossover pipe, but I picked up a shifter, I picked up a reservoir for my clutch and brake fluid, and finally the radiators and condensers for the front end of the car. Before I get too far into today's video, let me tell you a bit about Autobahn. So I'm here at Autobahn Porsche Dismantling, which is just outside of San Diego in Southern California. And to say this place is a Willy Wonka for Porsche parts would be the understatement of the year. So years ago, they started as a BMW and a Porsche dismantling service, uh, which was fantastic. And then over the last few years, they've gotten all the takeoffs from the Singer 911s. So if you guys know the Singer 911, you realize it is a Porsche supercar. They've basically recreated the entire car in carbon fiber. So these guys have gotten all of their takeoffs for the last few years. And to say they have a lot of inventory for the Porsche 964 would be, again, the understatement of the year. Literally hundreds of fenders and hoods and motor parts and wheels and interior parts and every little widget you can possibly think of, they've got it here. They've also got vintage Porsche stuff, they've got a ton of BMW stuff, and over the last couple of years, a bunch of Tesla stuff. So if you have a Tesla and you need to rebuild something or fix something, chances are Autobahn has it. So the other part that really blows me away about this place is not the volume of parts that they have, it's the organization of those parts. You can see behind me these hundreds of yellow bins that are all labeled early glove box, fog lights, airbag sensor, it is so organized. It's actually the most organized I've ever seen um, a, a parts dismantler. So if you need that one little widget that will make your restoration or your fix complete, they've probably got it. Uh, Sean here at Autobahn not only is uh, a parts guru, but is a racer and really understands how these things get used and what wears out and what works together and what can be an upgrade from one generation to the next. It's really, really incredible. So if you are looking for any obscure parts, any parts for your Porsche 911, uh, Autobahn probably has it or knows how you can get it. So these guys are helping me out with the blasphemy build with a few parts from the Porsche 996, which I need for my transmission and some other stuff. Um, but check them out at autobahnparts.com. I got it right here, and also I will link it up in the description below. You'll be hearing a lot about Autobahn because Sean is going to be helping me with this build, and there's a bunch of weird, obscure stuff I need for this because, of course, I'm mixing all these generations together. So thank you once again to Autobahn. Thanks for having me, and uh, let's get on with the video. So as you can see, Autobahn has pretty much everything you can imagine for water and air-cooled Porsches as well as BMW and Tesla. Thank you to Audubon for hooking these amazing parts up. And today we're gonna to focus on the shifter. One of the really cool things about the Porsche G96 shifter, which came in the uh, 996, the G86 came in the Boxster and Cayman. So it's a cable shift, six speed transmission. And the cool thing about that is that you don't have to worry about how you're gonna route these sort of hard shift linkage and you can move stuff around. So in today's video, I'm going to do my best to try to get the shifter to actually function. To do that, I'm going to have to put my original transmission mount back on, which is what we're going to start with. And then I've got to figure out um, how I'm going to mount this thing, but check this out. One of the really cool things about this shifter is that it's flat, meaning there's nothing underneath that has to move because I've got those coolant pipes running right now. I can hopefully just mount some holes. I'll probably use riv nuts for these holes, drill a couple of locating holes here for these bad boys, and then route the cables. And if that all works, then Bob's your uncle. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch the 
Um, I put actually a, a 1960, what I put? I put a 1983 transmission cradle uh, onto my car to see if I could get the thing a little lower. But I actually prefer the transmission cradle that I built a couple of episodes ago. So I'm going to put that back on, then work on routing this thing and getting it installed. It's always such a hard thing to try to shoot under this car as I'm working on it. But uh, so here's what we've got. I'm going to do my best for you guys here in this video. I've got this bracket and the cables have to run into this bracket. Right now I have the banana arm removed and I think I'm going to bolt it back on just so I have some semblance of like how much room I'm going to have to try to get these cables to route. They are very stiff and very difficult and I don't know what route I'm going to use for them yet. So I'm gonna put the banana arm back on now and just kind of see where I am with it. Now that I'm underneath and everything's bolted up, you can see what kind of tight quarters I'm looking at here. So the cables have to figure out a way to route out of there and then into this bracket. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I think I'm just gonna play with it a little bit now and see what it looks like. Cool. Okay, here's an episode of good news, bad news. Uh, and something I think I solved. Good news. As you saw, it functions great. The bad news is the routing of the cables is not only too circuitous, but it's too short. Shifter's like where the, almost where the e-brake would be. And this isn't even routed. This isn't even going through the tunnel. It's just sort of sitting there. That can't be. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch back to the original 73 cradle transmission cradle, try to lower the whole thing down a little bit, but I'm not gonna mount the transmission ears on so I can move it back and backwards and forwards. Right now, I think the whole transmission's too far back and it's making the lines too long. This is the problem with not having everything at once, is that like you do one thing and there's another engineering challenge to deal with. So I'm gonna pull off the, the transmission cradle that I made and then I'm going to put the original back on and just rest the transmission on top of it, literally how it was at the beginning of this video. So I'll get to do that all over again. The other thing is that I figured out my shocks, the way they are installed right now, have the threaded part at the top and then the shaft and the spring at the bottom. I'm just going to flip them. If I flip them, I'm going to have way more room for the axles. And that's going to be a big thing checked off my list. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. It's literally how my gray RSR is set up and I just didn't do it. So I'm gonna invert those, and that'll make it a little bit easier to have some room up there and just have a clearer path to the axles. But for now, I'm going to once again swap transmission mounts. I will spare you guys that and get back to you when we're starting to figure out where things have to go. Got the transmission mount in, I've got one shock done. Let's do the other one now, just at the very least to give me a break from crawling around on my back under the car. I'm trying to move the transmission up forward and I might have to do some cutting. So we'll see, but first let's get this shock reversed. Well, it wouldn't be an episode of Wrench if it didn't involve a fair bit of grinding. Here's what I'm gonna do. Okay, here's the nose of the transmission. And as you can see, I'm starting to have some interference issues I just don't have enough space up here to do what I've got to do. So I have about a half an inch that I can cut off of this torsion tube on each side. So I want to trim this top part off here before I weld the top plates on. I will be welding top plates over the uh, forward mount of the, the uh, banana arm here, but not the second. And then that lip and see if I can move the transmission up a couple of inches. Of course, I got to pull the motor first to do that. So let's do that. By the way, look how cool those coilovers look. 
inverted. All right, now it's a better perspective. I'm gonna cut basically from here. Cut that straight, cut this one straight. I might have to you know, get these things out of the way. Then I'm gonna cut this lip, which is a little high, so it's square as well because I'm fouling on that thing a little bit. And I think once I do that, I should be, well, certainly I'll have a lot more room. So it's time to get my audio book on and start grinding. Okay, so it's the next day, and yesterday was tough because every step I took to try to make this thing work, I had to do 10 modifications to, just to get to the part I was trying to get to, which was very challenging. Most of what I dealt with yesterday was trying to move the transmission close enough to the shifter because the shift cables are just too short. So now that I've had to think about it, I've looked online, then I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I'm gonna move the transmission and engine back a little bit and then I'm going to actually fabricate uh, a spot for the shifter, put some riv nuts in, uh, maybe do a bit of drilling and welding to route the cables. So let's get into that right now. So the big challenge here is that this uh, guide is right in the way of the banana arm. And I've got a couple different options, one of which is raising the transmission a little bit, which I think I'm going to do. And then I'm gonna actually move it back, I don't know, uh, maybe a couple of inches as well. And that should give me just enough clearance to run these cables through. Then the transmission's gonna be there. That's where it's gonna live. Then I will go deal with the shifter and then deal with these shifter cable length uh, at another time. Okay, transmission's moved. Got the cables connected the way they're supposed to now. And this thing is just buttery. It's so buttery smooth. Boom, boom. So this is exactly where it needs to be. You can see though, it's like eight inches too far back. That's okay. I'm gonna move it to where I wanna move it, which is right in the stock spot. So I'm actually gonna cut a tunnel in here for these cables to run down. So they'll kind of dip down and then go in, uh, just like the 996 does. And so now I'll disconnect, uh, so now I'm gonna disconnect the cables from back there, move the shifter to where I want it, mark some holes, drill some holes, put some riv nuts in, dig a tunnel, weld a little top part, and call this a day. Okay, I've got the shifter loosely uh, to where I want it. I, there's two locating pins on the underside, and I need to get holes drilled uh, for those locating pins. I could take a piece of paper and try to mark it. I'm gonna try something else now. I don't know if it's gonna work. So I'm going to spray a little paint right onto here and then lay this on top and see where it marks. And hopefully I'll get close enough. For a clean installation onto the car, I'm gonna use a riv nut tool. And this is what it looks like. And it uses these, which are little rivets. Basically, they work just like a rivet, but they've got a threaded insert on the inside. And you take the tool, you thread it onto the tool. You put the entire thing into a hole and then you squeeze it. And what happens is this thing pinches like a regular rivet would up against the backside of the, um, of the metal. 
I've marked my drill bit, my step bit here, so I know I only want to go four deep. I don't want to go to the fifth one because this matches my rivet. So I'm going to drill four holes that are this size. Each four of these rivets go in the hole, and then you squeeze them with the uh, riv nut tool. Then you squeeze them with the planes. <laughs> Please stop flying planes right this second. Why are you taking off so much? Why are all the planes flying every four seconds right now? I'm trying to film. Uh, okay back to our regularly scheduled programming. So I'm gonna drill the holes up to the black on the step bit, then insert four of these riv nuts, give them a squeeze with the riv nut tool, and then I can use a standard Allen screw to bolt down the shifter. Easy as pie, I hope. Okay, in theory, if I've done this well, I've got spots to mount my shifter with holes for the locating pins. Okay, success. This thing's super solid now. Beautifully mounted. These will go down into what would have been the e brake tunnel, and then, of course, I'll have to figure out something for the e brake and probably, you know, make some sort of console. So, this is where the transmission ended up after all that. I think what I'll do is make some kind of little cradle here for this OEM, and then I have plenty of room for my coolant pipes to come out. Well, that was a fun couple of days, I thought. I think the shifter is killer in there. Um, I actually threw a seat in and threw a steering wheel on, and once I got in there and really discovered the fact that I can move this thing anywhere I want, I may actually move it up and back a little bit and get that really killer, perfect uh, shifter position that a lot of the early cars didn't have. You know, if you ever see somebody like in an early 911, a lot of times you're reaching down for first gear I don't need to do that for this one. I can literally move it anywhere I want. So I may end up making some kind of standoff and moving it up and back a little bit. Or there are, because people race 996s so much and Boxsters and Caymans, there are like tons of aftermarket shift kits for this thing. So if you are one of those companies, please reach out. But I may end up getting some bitchin' race shifter just because I can. Why not? Anyway, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. As always, love the comments, love the subs. One thing you could do to help the channel if you want, it's free and you get something for free. I have a box of really cool garage. Let's see if that'll focus. Focus on that. They're like, there we go. They're like garage pencils, you know, they're for doing woodworking. Don't ask me why I have a box of like 250 of them, but I do. Um, if you would share this or any of the other videos, even the whole Blasphemy Build series playlist, which you can do, if you'd share this in like a Porsche forum or a Subaru forum or on Instagram or something like that, Facebook, and just let uh, Facebook groups, uh, just let other people know about this build and what we're trying to do over here and that it's kind of a fun project, uh, I will send you a pencil or two. I mean, I have two, who knows? But uh, do that and I will pop one in the mail for you. I'll pay the postage as long as you are in the United States of America. If you're not, I don't know how much that would cost or if you really want one of these anyway. But uh, if you do that, I would love you forever. And as always, like them, subscribe them, make a comment, high five, whatever. I'll see you guys next time.